I spend the majority of my time taking care of pediatric cancer patients at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Our goal in taking care of our pediatric patients is really um, multifold, um, but in the design of our center there were two goals that were really kept in mind. Um, the first one, of course, was to deliver the very, very, very best care that we possibly could to our patients. Um, and in doing this, we were able to create a combined center that takes care of both adult and pediatric patients, um, which has the world's only integrated photon and proton center. Um, the second part of our goal, however, was to make sure that the children who came to this integrated center still felt that they were in a pediatric center. So to that end, we do have a dedicated pediatric waiting room. Um, it's filled with toys and, you know, filled with bright colors, bright lights. We have dedicated child life specialists who work with all of our pediatric patients. Um, we have a dedicated pediatric anesthesia team that come from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia every day for our children who do require anesthesia. We have dedicated anesthesia bays for those children so that they can um, receive their anesthesia and be taken directly to the machine where they're going to be treated um, and then brought back to a dedicated recovery bay where there are toys and again a child life specialist who works with them where their parents can be with them for uh, every possible second except for the, ex the uh, precise time of the radiation treatment. Proton therapy uh, really offers tremendous benefit when we're talking about treating children. Um, it doesn't only offer benefit to children, but uh, I personally think that the benefits of proton therapy are sort of exponentially uh, increased when we're talking about developing tissue. The reason is that uh, when we treat a patient using photon therapy or x-ray therapy, um, the beam traverses the patient. Um, we as radiation oncologists take a great deal of time to plan exactly the way the beam will traverse the patient and to minimize the amount of radiation delivered to normal healthy tissue outside of the tumor. However, we're limited when we're using x-rays by the physical nature of the x-ray that it goes in the patient and out of the patient. A proton, when we treat a patient, enters the patient and then it stops and it deposits all of its energy or the vast majority of its energy in one place. Now we can really use that technology combined with um, our planning um, techniques and our uh, physical consultation from our physics uh, department um, that allow us to really sculpt the beam so that the dose is deposited at the edge of the tumor and not anywhere else. Um, this really allows us to spare normal tissue in a way that we never could before we had proton therapy. When we're talking about developing tissue, whether it be the brain, the spinal cord, the abdomen, the heart, the lung, um, in a child, Reducing or eliminating radiation exposure is absolutely paramount, um, and through use of proton therapy, we're able to do this. I think I have a couple of patient care philosophies. Um, the first one, which really goes generally without saying, is to deliver the very best care to every patient and family um, that I encounter. In addition, it's very important to try to understand how a patient's cancer is impacting his or her life, and to try to reduce any negative impact that the cancer is having. You know, whether our goal is really curative, whether we're in a palliative setting, there's always something that we can do to help. I'm Dr. Christine Hill-Kaiser. I'm an assistant professor of radiation oncology at Penn Medicine.